paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Twins are special. But what if their special bond means that they really cannot lead separate lives? That they are not free to love anybody else? Lisbeth and Angelique were born identical. Emotionally, they've never quite separated. They share their lives and their food to the last crumb, hoping to be exactly the same. Now, one of them wants to leave, to set herself free. If she tries to kill herself, then it's my fault. Lisbeth and Angelique are 35-year-old Dutch twins. They're identical, which means that they share 100% of their DNA. <laughs> their twinness is at the very core of who they are. They have fought against it at different times of their lives. These days, their arguments are mainly about food. It's unbearable. Elizabeth, would you like to try and be a little more separate? Would you try? Yeah, but it, I know it won't be. Uh, it's, it won't be possible if Angelique is also not willing to try it, and because otherwise, you know, she she will say, okay, then then it, it's your decision. Then I will die. You know, if you you leave me, then I, you know, it's the end of me. Lisbeth and Angelique are video artists. They're going to France to a twins convention, researching a new piece of work and looking to understand how other twins deal with their closeness. The twin convention is a celebration of twinness. 1,500 sets of twins attend every year, with the numbers rising as the birth rate for twins grows due to fertility treatments. Excuse me. Can you ask me a they thought it was a positive thing, but uh, we tried to talk, it, uh, but we came not into them, so... Uh. So all these people are so happy, you know, it's so... and it's so awful. It's just that image we hate, you know, because uh, that's always how in media a twin is represented, and that's awful. We were an attraction also. We were an attraction like you see the, these twins in those festivals. We didn't realize that we were an attraction because we were used to all that attention. We thought it was normal.
But if you go to the whole secondary school, you are not that special anymore. You know that it was not normal and the lack of attention is really, you know, made us so depressive because we were not special anymore and we were nobody. And that was like we were falling in a gap, you know, we were falling down like that. We got very depressive. I can't have fun if, I, if Angelique is not around. I can't have fun. You know, it's just I'm not enjoying myself. So I'm all the time worrying what is Angelique doing. And uh, I really, you know, I'm really uh, not that open to people because I'm all the time busy in my mind. Being a twin is tough. Your parents are twice as likely to split up as those of non-twins. Your mother is twice as likely to get depressed. And if you survive that, you might then have to compete with your twin. For women, food can be an important battleground. I got anorexia when I was 13 and then Lisbeth got it and I wanted to protect it that she didn't fall more down than I did because I was jealous, you know, and then, you know, we got that, that competition between us. Eating together is really uh, nice, you know, so it's really comfortable feeling because you don't, you, as, uh, you don't have to feel guilty because somebody else is also doing it, you know, and that's nice. You don't have to think. So you, so you are... Uh, uh, giving over your responsibility to the other person. Mm, that's just a cozy, nice feeling that uh, we can't throw away like that. Lisbeth and Angelique particularly dislike it when twins dress the same. We hate also this image, you know, that we put together. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, 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 it's pathetic. I think it's pathetic. Really, she would be ashamed. For Angelique and Lisbeth, this event is not a success. No, we don't want to belong to them. We don't want to belong to them. Instead, as they divide their crisps, they feel even more alienated. And that feeling of separateness from the world brings back some painful memories from their adolescence. We realized that we had to, to be an adult, you know, we had to leave each other to get, a, to get a personal life. And we realized that we would never get a boyfriend. We could never fall in love. Yeah, we have accepted the situation and uh, I think we are quite happy. Back in Amsterdam, every mealtime is a complex negotiation. It appears to be neither cosy nor comfortable, but a power struggle. Minder. Nee, Je kan niet terugtrekken. Ik ga het zoeken. Nee. Nee, 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 Nee. Dan kijk ze nog maar eens hier schoon. En dat doen we nu. 
Nej, det är som att nu. Där, så den är sen där i stumt röd. Nu trycks det inte rätt. Men det går nit. Det går nit, eller? Nej. Ach, nej, nej. Jag är inte så flau som dig. Det är så. Max. Florek. Det är en flau trubbis. Nu ska jag inte få dela. At home in Amsterdam, identical twins Angelique and Lisbeth start their day with a vigorous exercise routine. The two have agreed to eat exactly the same amount of calories to control their feelings of competition, which originally fueled their anorexia. Their lives are driven by rules, rules of when and how to eat, and what swaps can be made for different foods. Well, this is a lot of work for me, this soup, because I have to count every piece of ham which is in it. Why? Because that's to be the same. The same, uh, you know, that not everyone has, one has the big ones, and. And the other one has uh, the small uh, couteaus. We to it's totally different if you go to a restaurant, then this vet is going to order one dish and we share that one. But this vet has two spoons in the hand and I have to take a spoon, which is a little bit full on. So she has to make it all equal. In several of us, once we are not allowed anymore to come because they don't want us to do that, because everything goes exactly the same. We, we, we take a sip of our wine at the same time, and but we don't notice that from ourselves, you know. Now we have to uh, to change to change because Angelique always left, has some left over. We don't trust each other that we have eaten it well enough. So now that's why we have this rule that we always have to change. Come on, Julie. Every task to do with food is a battle. Even shopping. Nee, die pakt me niet. Nee, dat is niet Nee, die pakken we het Nee, 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 Ik wil niet morgen niet. Ja, maar dan moet je zeker drie broertjes bij die trappen. Briefke mag ze het zeggen. En dat wordt het tien uur. Ik heb het niet. 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 Ik heb het These women are 35 years old, but during these encounters, they somehow seem much younger. A childhood friend, Diane, now a mother of twins herself, remembers the twins when they were teenagers. This is uh, us uh, posing uh, on a beach in, um, in Spain. You could see this picture maybe as a symbolization for the uh, love-hate relationship that they have. Because um, I do think they're really um, good friends, uh, but maybe they can be their worst enemies as well. What about boys? Did you, did, you, did you guys have any adventures with boys at that time? Yeah. I mean, they are very good-looking girls. Um, they were then and they are now. And so it's, it's a shame they don't have uh, any boyfriends. But um, I don't know why.
The twins' shared history is a struggle between love and intense competitiveness. Angelique was considered the more beautiful and talented of the two. She was a perfectionist, and her anorexia was part of it. She trained as a fashion designer and got a job in Paris with Jean-Paul Gaultier, which she kept for almost five years. At home in Amsterdam, Lisbeth struggled and failed to get a job as a photographer. She came to live with Angelique in Paris and got depressed. The two fueled each other's anorexia and eventually Angelique gave up her job and they went back to Holland. Angelique really quit her job for me, you know, with Jean-Paul Coudier and that was really hard for her because she started to lose so much weight after she has made her decision. So I feel guilty about that, like it's my fault that it started again. But it's not really your fault, is it? Well, she says that when we argue sometimes, that uh, I, I quit my job for you, she says. And that's really painful. So. So that's why I really, I, I can't blame her for sometimes being such a bitch, you know, then, because I know she did that much for me. On their return to Holland, Lisbeth and Angelique became video artists, called themselves L.A. Raven, and created installations about their twinness and their anorexia. But then Angelique's weight dropped dangerously to 29 kilograms, and she was sectioned under the Mental Health Act. You were the one who almost died, yeah? Yes, yes. And so that's scary. It's also scary to know that Angelique is probably uh, the person who will die first. Why would you say that? because she has much um, more, yeah, um, more health issues. Yeah, yeah, because of my bad behavior in history, so. Well, I met Angelique Raven uh, three years ago in 2003 when she was admitted to uh, Mentrum Psychiatric Hospital. At this time, she was in a very severe form of starvation. She was suffering from a very, very deep uh, hyponatremia, which means a very low sodium, and which, uh, if not treated, can lead uh, to very severe uh, neurological damage, cardiac arrest, and eventually can lead to death. Yeah, that was very, very hard because, you know, people don't realize what they did at that moment. You know, they thought that they could force me to eat, but I didn't. For Angelique, this clash between her eating disorder, which she considered a private matter, and the psychiatric authorities was deeply humiliating. It may well have ended tragically, but for Lisbeth's daily visits, which kept her twin alive. It was also clear that Angelique was not eating when I was away, but in that hour when I came, I took yeah, food with had, me. had permission to come one hour a day. And then but she had to eat, eat, you know, to eat something. In that hour, I ate so much with her. She took uh, food with her, and that we ate and, together. And we tried to make the, the people there clear, look, now Angelique eats. If we are together, she can eat. Whilst at the hospital, the twins vowed to eat together at all times, with Lisbeth, the healthier of the two, in charge. On one level, it's been a success, as Angelique's weight has gone up by 50% since they made the pact. She's always forcing me to do something that but I don't want. But that's only for your own good, to Angelique. Yeah, she says so, but... Because otherwise, as if it was up to Angelique, she would ate, would ate too less, you know, she would lose weight again. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, sure.
Lisbeth has been fighting off their eating disorder for years. Now, she still hopes life might have other things in store for her. I'm the person who wants to change more than her, and I have also much more prospects to look for. And um, Why did you say that? Well, because I, th I see other possibilities which we, what we can do differently, and Angelique doesn't want that. She would, her perfect life is life together with me only. Having given up her glittering career in Paris for her twin sister, Angelique's life is simple these days. When she's not obsessing about food, she sketches ideas for projects. Only images of their relationship and of Lisbeth, her mirror, and the love of her life. I sometimes, you well, I rather know her body more as mine because I look to her all the time. She's definitely looking much nicer than myself. The distance between your bodies and how long your arms are, how long your legs are, how long your body is, she has a good balance and my balance is disturbed. Angelique had a spinal fracture three years ago due to anorexia. Her quest for perfection lost forever. She lost nine centimetres in height and is now shorter than Lisbeth. In the past, it was her who was the taller twin. The twins' relationship has changed over the years. Angelique used to be the more powerful, but now it is Lisbeth, the physically stronger one, who has the upper hand. They are both still virgins, but Lisbeth hopes this might change soon. I've, I dated uh, a guy on, uh, on the internet, you know, we have, we write to each other for half a year. And he is the ideal man, you know, really, I'm, I'm in love with him. And last week was our first meeting. We would go for lunch together. It was really a big step, you know, it was really uh, amazing. But I really didn't care, you know, that Angelique did good. I didn't want Angelique to come with me. And, and, and I really wanted to go alone and have lunch with him alone. I don't know, maybe it's a fantasy. It's possible. But also the thing like that I'm fantasizing about it, having a relationship with him, is also something you know which gives you strength to to make changes. Weeks go by, summer passes, and the autumn chill begins to set in, as Lisbeth's hopes for love are being dashed. I got a phone call from his work and uh, he got a, a brain bleeding and now I don't, he can't contact me right now, so I don't know where he is, that's why I was so depressed. When you say brain bleeding, you mean like a stroke? Yeah, at 28 years old. I don't have his telephone number. We were just I gave mine, but he didn't give his yet. So if he's better and he calls me again, we will pick it up. He can only email it from his work. So it's really strange. There are some strange things with it. And uh, mm. Lisbeth's boyfriend's mysterious illness has created additional stress and anxiety in the twins' relationship. Ja. 
Det kan nog inte någon mycket tro. Nej, det kan inte. Nej. Det kan inte någon. Men det kan inte kamera. Ja, men det kan inte någon. Ja, men det är för att det är en stängd Jag har inte grund för det, men det kan nog inte någon. Nej, det kan inte någon. Nej, det fanns från dina affärer då. Jag kan inte trycka sig. Det kan inte från promotion. Ok, det kan inte från mig. Jag kan inte ta det för att se. Jag kan inte ta det för att trycka. Det är inte att det är så från Angelica och Lippel och från sin sex och från min Lippel och från Phil. Ja. Det kan nog inte någon mycket tro. They still divide one crisp equally and calculate how much Angelique can drink to make up the calories for Lisbeth's ice cream. It has to be totally empty. It has to be totally empty, otherwise the calories which are on the package are not right. <laughs> it's stupid, so... The battle for control is intense. As Lisbeth is still waiting for her boyfriend to get in touch, even the smallest incident seems to be pushing the twins' relationship to breaking point. This has been a troubled autumn for Lisbeth and Angelique. Lisbeth's boyfriend went very quiet for a few weeks. And then she had a message that he was in a coma. A couple of weeks later, another message came that her boyfriend never recovered and died. It was also painful to learn that his cremation and service had already taken place without her. Lisbeth still cannot find a way to express her sadness over the loss of her dream. So, can you talk about that briefly? I just don't want to talk about it anymore. It's, it's all too painful. No, really not. Lisbeth is about to dispense wine for Angelique, a complex procedure. Why are you using that little bottle for babies, Lisbeth? Because there are, there are millimeters really clearly noted on the bottle. So we 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 we. Take me off with the glasses. Nee, it's not me. Nee, dat is niet meer. 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 Nee, dat is niet Nee, ik doe niet alleen maar meer aan het jullie seizoen deze uur. Ik heb de pot op. Laat het maar. Nee, ik pak het niet. Nee, het is maar apart. Het is maar apart, dus je het niet te pakken, want ik pak het toch niet. Het is wel apart. Het is toch apart, ik ga het niet doen hier. Echt niet. Het is maar apart. Het is maar apart, ik ga het echt niet doen. Als ik niet doe, dan schiet ik het nog eens. Nee, want ik heb het doen, ik ga het niet doen. Ik ga het echt niet doen, het is echt wel apart. Het is maar een sop, het is helemaal niks, dus ik heb het niet te pot op. 
Nee, ik hoor donker Ik Ken je een vrouw nog? Ik ken nog vrouw nog twee. Nee. Ik ken toch niet meer? Ik doe het meer bij de bier doen en als het niet... Nee, nee ik hoor niet nog meer. Nee, dan laat ze het. Dan denk ik niet meer in de Nee, ik doe niet door de 120. Ik vind het veel leuk die ik ben bekeken dat het niet door de 120 is. Ik heb de pot op, dan eet ze toch niet met... Ik heb niet scherm. Nee, dan kies ik de pot op. Dat is dan niet. Dat toch? Nee. Dat is onredelijk, Angelique. Ja, als je meer dan 120 is, dan ik ben ze niet. Het is niet meer dan 120. Oh. En het is echt niet meer. Het is wel een stomme kloete kut. En ik heb al zoveel extra gepakt, maar dan is het niet sowieso de pot op. Dan laat ze het er aan om. Het is een stomme kloete vis. Zet ze maar alleen op tijd. Ik hoef het niet te hebben. Ja, ik ben zelf ook. Ik hoef het niet te hebben. Ik moet dat niet hebben. Ik doe dat ook maar goed, ik hoef dat niet te hebben. Nee. Ja, ik hoor niet, Lisbeth, dat is het zo moord. Nee, die wist ik niet dat andere een reden is. Nee, die is zo moord. Nee, Oh god, dat moet een koophoudzak. Ik hoor niet die zo'n lieve zet, hoor. She's been difficult with eating and what she wants to eat and the limit of it and I get crazy of it. I just don't want to eat when I'm so in a, such an emotional uh, s uh, um, atmosphere. A couple of weeks later, Lisbeth fell over in the street. It was a slight fall, but her skin and bones weakened by prolonged anorexia are like those of an old woman. And so her leg broke badly in a few places, and she had to have an emergency operation to avoid amputation. Because I was stuck with my, with my left feet in the, in the tram rail. When I took it out, I saw me, oh, this is not good. You know, it was so, so awful to see the direction of the foot. And then I saw the bo bone came, coming out, and then it, it started bleeding. And then a boy came and took me from the, from the, from the road. Also, a lot he of other people wanted to help. He heard also the knack, eh? Yeah, he, he heard the bone break. break yeah. Yeah. But it is somehow connected to the osteoporosis, right? Well, um, you know, they said the fracture was, was typical for osteoporosis. osteoporosis. That right. Right. Whilst at the hospital, Lisbeth takes the opportunity to eat bread, a treat not often granted at home. A home movie she's made shows her twin sister Angelique exactly what she consumes. Meanwhile at home, alone, Angelique stops eating altogether, waiting for her twin to come home. I'm lost without this pet and like, like I'm also lost with her, so I can't live with and, and also not without her. Because when Angelique was not in the hospital, my blood pressure was normal and when as soon as she comes by, my blood pressure goes, um, ha goes high. So I'm not sure it doesn't come from the food we eat, but more, you know, the stress which when we, when we are together. Ooh, okay. Oh, so kind of that. Are you sort of a little bit angry as well? Barry? No, I'm just very depressed. The balance of power has shifted again. Angelique is in control once more. Her physically stronger sister, suddenly disabled. 
this almost feels like Paris days again, when Angelique was a star designer who supported her depressed twin, Lisbeth. But Lisbeth finds it too isolating. If I was Angelique, I really would need my mother to come. And I really want, wanted it. Like when Angelique was in the mantram, my mother came immediately and I really needed her. But Angelique, she really didn't want them to come. You know, if, if it happened to Angelique, you know, I would have eaten something on my own. Two weeks later, there is a new crisis. Angelique discovers that she has shrunk by another centimeter in the last three months. She's horrified, as this confirms that her severe osteoporosis caused by anorexia is getting worse. You lied to me for three years. Yeah, because I knew you, because I was afraid for this. When you say that she lied to you, what do you mean? Well, you know, every time um, when we are standing um, next to each other, she's um, six that, um, mm. bending her knees a little bit or keeping herself smaller, you know, that it looks like we are, that the difference between us is not, not that big. Is there anything that people can do to help? No, but, yeah, Lisbeth could help me, but she knows how. So how could she help? She could eat more, you mean? Yeah. It she doesn't would. solve the problem at all. You would still... But I would feel better. Years after her glory days in Paris, crippled by the anorexia which has made her shrink 10 centimetres, Angelique is ready to abandon the sisters' pact to eat the same. Now she wants Lisbeth to eat herself fat so that she, Angelique, can feel less ugly. The most difficult thing is that I can't handle Angelique, her depression anymore. And because when we, we are in bed, then she's, the whole, the, all the time, she's saying, I can't anymore, I don't want anymore. And it's just not fair. And I'm now not saying that anymore. I've all said that all week, not anymore, Lisbeth. You say you only You forgot if... last night. I heard it. What, what would be the way forward, Angelique? I really wouldn't know. I really wouldn't know. Sometimes I really think Elisabeth can better go on her own. And I have to go away. Because I have now the feeling that I'm, I'm responsible for Angelique and if if she, she tries to kill herself, then it's my fault. And, and no other doctor said, we, we, we didn't know, you know, I don't want them to say that if something like that happens. Hey, I have the feeling I'm on, on my own with this problem of her. Do you think she could really seriously think of suicide? Yeah. Do you think there would have been a time in your childhood where something could have been done differently when you were very young? Well, it is already wrong, you know, to, um, to, to have the, the, um, the same clothes on and things like that are really important how small they are, seem to be, but uh, the teacher said it's better, you know, to, uh, to separate them. And we, but we didn't want that, and my mother agreed, no, they want to be together. Depression is engulfing them. 
Angelique refuses to see any Dutch psychiatrist, but reluctantly agrees to the suggestion of a consultation in London. Identical twins, Lisbeth and Angelique, are on their way to London to a psychiatric consultation. The stakes are high. The hope is that the assessment with a British psychiatrist will be the first step on the road to emotional independence and that they'll be able to continue the treatment in Holland. It's like an addiction. If somebody has an addiction like alcohol, they say you, when you, if, if you have treated the alcohol problem, then you must never drink again, you know? Yeah, but, and, but we can't say that. We can't say, uh, you know, I can't see her anymore. The twins are going to Guy's hospital to see Professor Janet Treasure, a psychiatrist and an international authority on eating disorders and also twin relationships. I feel that Angelique and I are too close, and mm -hmm. um, I would like to uh, eat separate from Angelique. But um, Angelique really puts me for a dilemma that um, saying that if I want to eat separately, she will not eat again. When I got anorexia first, it was so hard. Very yeah. hard. Sometimes I, I was blind during the week mm -hmm. by not eating. So sometimes you couldn't see. Yeah, I was I got mm. blind. I I would like to be able to have children, but um, I just don't know um, if another person will be more can be more important than Angelique. It sounds as though that choice of of choosing a man over Angelique would seem so tough, so painful, you wouldn't be able to do it. She would really feel lost. You think that it mm. would, would be extremely painful for her? Mm. Well, there's part of both of you that would like a relationship mm. and mm. maybe set, marry and have mm. children mm. even. But, but, you know, I feel that I'm not worth it. So I don't want to hmm. keep another person with that. Really? That's, that's so sad. You don't even allow yourself to think about developing a close relationship. Yeah, but also because I've lost everything now. You know, I can't go back. To be honest, what would really help me mm -hmm. if some of Angelique would be taken, um, you know, be hospitalized? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be really, and then I would, for example, live um, with my mother or with a friend, mm -hmm. not alone. That mm -hmm. that would be not helping. Mm -hmm. As part of the consultation with Professor Treasure, Lisbeth and Angelique undergo neuropsychological tests to assess how their brains process information. <laughs> In the museum, there are sculptures and um, um, paintings. You're pretty much the same, as you yeah. can see, aren't you? Isn't that yeah. amazing? You're almost like copies of each other. People with anorexia, usually mm. they do it quicker took you much less time uh, and quicker than most anorexics. So you're very good at this task. Mm. Yeah, I can't so even though your, your brain isn't working at full capacity because uh, you know, you, perhaps your diet isn't as optimal as it would be, you're still brilliant at this task, seeing detail. 
because we do find that people uh, with anorexia, when you've got the details, suddenly food isn't just energy for life or a social experience. It is the details of the calories, the composition, rather than the bigger picture. If I don't eat, my bones will get thinner and, you know, that sort of thing, and my health will be impaired. Because I do know that, you know, when anorexia does hit twins, it can be really tough. And we had some twins who both died of it in, um, who were very friends and both did die. It's really tough. But uh, there is part of uh, Angelique who, who can see bigger things. In fact, this Angelique doesn't want to change. Mm -hmm. no. the, the, the food problem is, not, is, is nothing in, in comparison with my height problem. Mm -hmm. But the two are a bit intertwined, are very much intertwined, aren't they? Yeah, in a way, but... Uh... Mm. But there's another part of you both that is thinking, maybe make a step further on. Can we think about any help? Uh, that would help you move on. I know that one thing has been thought about uh, is thinking, is it hospital or not hospital? I mean, wh what I could do is write a report and recommend something like that to, to the, some of the, 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 the expert centres in Holland, because you've got very good expert centres there. I j just don't want Maybe that. You just so. have this big wall uh, before, because you don't even don't want to make an effort. Yeah, but they will not. What will they say? I mean, you can't only the one thing that they want, but do not then. I don't know. 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 Yeah. Angelique wants to think about it. No, I want to think about it. I have already said it. Die meneer heeft zo wel zo kwaad met me met gewoon. Je zal wel moeten. Ik kan niet, ja, moet ik dan helemaal in achter, lieve kind? Oh, ik kan het toch proberen. Ik probeer ze allemaal luid te zien die mij die mij moeten ja. dwingen of wat. Dus ja, dan voel ik me gewoon, uh, ja. ja. Ik probeer ze mij gewoon voor het blok te zetten. Ik weet nog niet wat ik moet zeggen. Zeg dan dat ze niet wens. <laughs> weet ik veel. Ja, we, uh, we just don't know what to do. Ja. Well, but I mean, you could try. We could make the make the referral, and then you decide. It's mm. you know, life's an experiment. I think that's a good idea. Mm. 